first precept of the Klingon art of war is choose your enemies well. That precept lies at the heart of all Klingon combat philosophy and helped to inform the kind of martial arts and battle tactics they used. These tactics were developed on their home world of Kronos, which Canon says is located in Beta Quadrant of the Milky Way Galaxy. Kronos has been kept in great condition for a planet that houses such a warrior culture as the Klingons. Traditions have been kept alive in its many temples, sanctuaries, and fighting pits. The Klingons are an interesting species. They've been depicted as a harsh but regimented culture, a kind of hybrid between total barbarians and honorable samurai. Klingons relish the thought of dying in combat, or in service to an ideal, and though they are clearly a society based on a warrior caste system, they are not necessarily all warmongers. This subtle distinction often leaves them misunderstood as a species. Klingons are also a hardy people. Their skeletons are denser than humans, and they have multiple redundancy in their internal organs, such as a third lung, two livers, multiple stomachs, and an eight-chambered heart, allowing them to survive severe injuries in combat. Their only real weakness appears to be a distaste for cold weather. Klingon culture is also strongly ritualized. There is growling and snarling in an animalistic way during weddings and burials. But they are not total barbarians, for some of their rituals are found in the soft, kata-like motions of the martial art Makbara. A powerful figure in Klingon mythology, the warrior known as Kalos the Unforgettable was believed to be the greatest warrior of all Klingons. During what would be the ninth century for humans, Kalos the Unforgettable defeated the last of his enemies and forged the Klingon Empire by his own hand. Lieutenant Worf said that both Makbara, as well as the legendary Batleth Klingon sword, came from this legendary warrior. In a piece of dialogue that was cut from the TNG episode Birthright Part 2, Worf said the following, This is Makbara, a great warrior named Kalos invented the forms when he went to the underworld in search of his father. Kalos showed him the forms, and his father was able to remember his body and return to the world of the living. Worf was known to be a gifted Makbara instructor, and also gifted in the use of the Batleth. He was a martial arts instructor aboard the Starship Enterprise, and so a lot of this video will take from dialogue that he spoke specifically. Batleth translates as Sword of Honor. It is the most famous of traditional Klingon weapons, and it is known for its exotic look. The Batleth was said to be made by Kalos the Unforgettable, and it has become synonymous with the Klingon culture of honor and dignity. Even young Klingon children are taught how to use it. The Batleth has a distinct curved shape, which gives it the ability to redirect an opponent's blows while at the same time possibly ensnaring an enemy's blade with the forked underprongs at each end. Some people in the fandom have mocked the Batleth in the past, saying that it isn't very utilitarian, or not a logical weapon to quote the Vulcans. But let's see about that. After all, there are certainly a lot of strange and unwieldy weapons in Earth's ancient history. So let's give a Batleth a test drive, shall we? And see what it can do. Okay, so even though this, is, this video is mostly about Makbara, the Botleth, which we have a smaller version of here, there's a larger version, obviously the most famous version of the large one. All we've got today is a smaller version. Something to think about is that you would have more power if you ever work with a staff. If I have two hands on and kind of split apart, more power but less range, right? Because I can only go so far. But if I have this idea, I have more range right? But a little bit less power, except for power from speed, because force equals mass times speed, right? So if he feeds like an angle one, I might be able to catch it here. And you've got these prongs right in here, right? So he feeds it, and I can actually pinch that. I simply turn my wrist to pinch and control. And it actually has a pretty good reaction there. Here's a potential disarm. 
Right. You'll see Lieutenant Worf uh, do this kind of block here. I'm not sure what it's called in canon. It looks, I just looks like a fan. Almost like you've seen fan, like in Kung Fu, they use fans. So like if he feeds, and I block and I go that direction, and he's coming back this way. It occurred to me during the making of this video that really the Batleth ought to be its own separate video, and it will be in the future. Because while making this, we realized there is just so much potential for this weapon, so we will be exploring that further in a future video. Notable moves in the Makbara fighting system is the Komanara, which is described as a block similar to the crane block of Kung Fu, which indicates crane-like motions in their system. Yet there are also numerous allusions to a tiger claw-like motion in the hands, which reflect tiger claw motions of Kung Fu tiger hand, suggesting ripping and tearing motions. So there's a move uh, that Worf does, that uh, Lieutenant Worf does in The Next Generation, where you see that they appear kind of is this, uh, this motion here, and his hands curl in, and they come out, like that idea there. Uh, it, comes, it comes from a form that he's doing in the Makbara form. Uh, he, he spreads like a long, like sort of horse, or a bow stance, and he brings these hands in. And we were looking at it, sort of looking at, well, what could that mean? So if David is here, and we'll make sure we're in frame here, if he throws a jab, it could be this idea, wrapping, Trapping the hand. So if you can see that I'm trapped in the hand, I pull this in here can become the tiger. This idea. So if we get a little bit closer. Alright, so you'll see this idea with the tiger claw. You don't always have to hit with the entire hand or the claws. It's like this U-shaped, the ridge of the palm here. That, a lot of times, has enough force to do what you're trying to do. So, it also allows you to drive a little bit more. See how you move? It's a bit, a bit sturdier. It allows you to punch and drive a little bit more. So I can hit, and after that hits over, I don't even have to wind up, you know, most punches you have to wind up to get more force, to get a good hit. I can just break off, and I'm already within range to hit. Or vice versa. I hit, and this comes back down. I'm just going to hit with the ridge. One, two. One, two. Or reverse it. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. And then, of course, this can follow up with any number of those. Any combination you want to put in there. Alright, so in Makbara you see a lot of motions that uh, if, you, if you've read any of the canon, if you've seen the, the, the movies or the TV show, you see they do what's called uh, crane motions and tiger claw motions. Those motions are based off of what one of the choreographers on the show came up with because he himself does Tai Chi, which has some of those motions. So if we see something like how that might actually work, if David throws like a jab at me, like this idea of this tiger claw, could rotate and grab and pull him in. Or if I go beyond the arm and he feeds it, it might be here to the head. It's like this idea of raking. If he throws a jab, and in the process of this coming in, he also throws a cross, I catch it, and this would be this idea. You'll see that a lot like in Kung Fu and Tai Chi. Just this, this chain motion, if you've ever seen Wing Chun, they do this idea. You'll see it in Shaolin Kung Fu, uh, Southern and Northern style. So, and the crane motion looks like this. The cool thing about that is it can go kind of either way. You could go tiger claw to crane or crane to tiger claw. So if he feeds it, I might block with this motion, this bump motion here, this idea, and then tiger claw back across. Or I could tiger claw kind of defending this, and this motion here, if I play on his shoulder, it's a, it's a nice lift. 
you play it on your partner like someone, if you got a buddy who doesn't mind you bumping him, you just touch the side of the head, you just feel how hard that is. So he feeds the jab, it might be here and here. Uh, if he feeds the jab cross, it's here, here. And then this might follow up with this. So that's one idea for combining in Makabara the concept of what we would call tiger claw and crane. Final analysis? The Klingons didn't mess around when it came to fighting. They were known for their directness in combat, as well as their bravery and disdain for cowardice. However, they are not stupid, unthinking barbarians. They have a deep understanding of strategy and a powerful commitment to their heritage and traditions. Makbara shows how complex the species is, remaining connected to the soft and the spiritual, while not yielding an inch in what the essence of a combative art is supposed to be, a killing art. Like Worf said, the form clears the mind, but once the mind is cleared, it's time to kick some ass. Makbara is clearly a realistic martial art, though some of the more flowing motions would probably not show up in actual combat, but are rather there for tuning the body and steadying the spirit. As for the Batleth, well, it kind of speaks for itself. Medieval weapons of varying weird designs have shown clear applications, and we could find no reason that the Batleth could not have been an acceptable weapon in feudal combat, while probably having very little use in any modern or advanced civilization. Like the katana, its time has come and gone, but in the hands of a master, it could absolutely be used at the right time to kill many enemies. And also like the katana, it is now relegated to more ceremonial functions where it belongs as a reminder of the warrior spirit that once drove its designers to create such a beautiful piece of weaponry, helping to forge an empire from dust. As always, thank you guys for listening and watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.